Valodja is not here. It's, I mean, I'm not yeah. sure. Not yeah. for the phone. It's not for the phone. This is the time. Do we have the time so. already or what? What is it? Yeah. Father well, and colleague, you announce the speaker. So we will hear tonight the <laughs> talk of Peter Gash from Boston University and about the other. So. So first of all, I don't know, I mean, uh, 
even if uh, maybe everybody in this room knows what several automata are, I do not actually. Okay, I, I would still define them because I want some uh, unified language. So, a several automaton is uh, the following that you have a typically finite or infinite grid. And, uh, at each point of the grid, there is some kind of, there is something, well, we can call it a site or we can call it a cell. But there is a, a state associated with each site. And so the com, uh, we call a configuration. At, uh, and there is uh, also a be, uh, behavior of the system in time. At any one time, each cell has some kind of, some state. And then we'll have some uh, 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 dynamics. But so, so, so generally we will call by C the set of states. And that it, uh, it could be finite. Today I will consider infinite state, but uh, uh, state space, but when the space is finite frequently, there is a question of what will be the boundaries and uh, Frequently, uh, we use a model in which there is no boundary, so the left side is connected to the right side, like the circular or tornadoes. And uh, so there is a set of local states, everywhere, uh, at every side the same. And so the co then the configuration just assigns a state to itself. And so I would call uh, such a configuration here by psi. And, uh, and then, so in this example, there are three states, zero, one, or two. And uh, then uh, when, the, when the system develops in time, then well, at least in this talk, the hi I would call the history also a space-time configuration. But let us say we can just call it the history. Right? And there will, uh, frequently there is some time zero and an initial configuration. That would, we will talk about the initial configuration. And then what, what determines uh, the behavior, uh, when we determine the behavior, generally the, uh, the, the cells to decide what their next state is, generally then you look at some neighbors. So more formally, we will have a neighborhood which is just an array of some of the neighbors. And the, the, the next state will somehow depend on those neighbors. So here we call the neighborhood an array theta. And um, so here is some examples. So the typical, uh, uh, most uh, frequently, uh, in two dimensions, uh, in two dimensions, uh, this neighborhood uh, would be called the Freudian neighborhood. Let us say this neighborhood would be called the tall, the more neighborhood, uh, and uh, will, and this neighborhood is called the tall, uh, tall neighborhood. We'll get to that later. And so now this is now something that I will use. I uh, want to use as a notation. Uh, we will have also a local transition function for uh, so each cell. So we, we imagine we can also imagine several automaton as a little machine or so as I say some kind of discrete partial differential equation or whatever you want. So essentially at any time point of time each cell will determine its next state as a certain function of its neighborhood and this function uh, typically, these things are more homogeneous in space and time, so each, at each state or per point of space and time, this function is the same. Right here, I call this function G, right? And so, so here is uh, an example, right? So in one, here is a one-dimensional serial automaton, and this, uh, the next at the next time step here, the state depends on these two states using uh, applying to it the function g. Right? So the, uh, there is a well, I don't think 
So here is an example. And, and oh yeah, so I do call. So a history, when I say history, I don't mean something uh, that is necessarily uh, uh, obeying the transition rule. A history will say that, and a history is obeying the transition rule, we will call it a trajectory. But we we'll need to consider other histories because they will introduce uh, errors, or uh, in general, yeah. random error automata. So that, uh, that then will, the uh, notion of trajectory also changes. But so history, a history by itself would be any assignment of states. And the trajectory is the one that has some, or obeys some conditions. So here is a particular, I don't think we need to look at this particular rule, but there is a, a rule 110 of Wolfram. Is that, so, right, uh, Stephen Wolfram intro, uh, is, uh, introduced a numbering for all two states, three neighbor, one dimensional rules, there are only 256 on them, of them and he just number them from 0 to 255. And some of these rules are quite non trivial Rule 110 is famous because it was proved about, proved about it that in some sense it's computational and universal. Uh, so, okay, so a server automaton is just defined, is defined by these states the area of cells, the neighborhood that the transition function. So a, good, a, a particular example that we will look at more is what is called the tool rule, uh, which is <coughs> so that, uh, you have two states, 0 or 1, and the neighborhood you look at is this tone neighborhood, and the transition rule is just take the majority of these neighbors. Now, so our interest is in something like error correction, but more generally, whatever, so, or actually more simply, just uh, suppose that we are interested in the following, that we have a, a several automaton rule, for example, that when, when you start with a was uh, it, would, uh, it would stay in all zeros. But then, what, suppose you start it from not all zeros, but from a finite island. Then you would like it to be in a finite number of steps to return to all zeros. But you can, use, you can actually generalize this. You can say, okay, we started from some configuration, it would start some kind of uh, uh, trajectory. Now you start it from a, another configuration which changed, in which you changed uh, your, the initial one in, in a finite number of cells. Still after a finite number of steps, it should uh, uh, be, uh, uh, become equal to this other trajectory, which, uh, right? So somehow these finite differences would be erased. So if the, so if the, the cell automaton has this property, we would call it self restoring right? And so, and uh, of course there are some very trivial self restoring server automata, right? So suppose that the transition rule is this, that in one step, no matter what the neighborhood is turned to zero. It's not too interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, suppose that you want to uh, for example, you, you would like the same property, but at least for two very different initial configurations. Let us say from uh, the all zeros and from all, all ones, for example, should both be self story. This is already uh, actually quite non trivial. So, uh, of course, you would think, okay, why? Why, uh, well, first of all, it's clear that uh, somehow, whatever it means we, for the rest self-restoration, we need some kind of redundancy. So that, uh, well, of course, if all the finitely many uh, elements are, let us say, zero, then we have plenty of redundancy. So, uh, but also one needs to take advantage of redundancy. For example, in one dimension, 
But you would, your first example, uh, uh, first idea should be, okay, why don't we do some kind of majority group, right? But in one dimension, clearly, it's not going to work, right? In, in, you look at a finite island, then at the edges, uh, uh, the majority vote will not know in which way to push the edge, right? And as a matter of fact, it doesn't work even in two dimensions. So the, this uh, symmetric majority vote doesn't work even in two dimensions. Look at the, if you look at the, uh, suppose you, you look at the for Neumann neighborhood and let us say a cell and we put in a square finite island, right? Then a square. Uh, inside the square, everybody will be happy. They will be in the majority, except on the corner. But the corner, uh, well, actually here, yeah, even in, the, uh, in this simple case, in the corner. So simply a square would be just uh, uh, that island would never be at least, right? So it's not, it's not so easy to to uh, find a, actually a transition rule that raises a finite island. So it, it was actually a, a, an interesting discovery of Andre that, uh, uh, that the, this asymmetric majority voting on the Tom neighborhood raises a finite island. So here is uh, one finite, right? so you can take any of the finite island of once, let us say, and close it into a, into a big rectangle, uh, 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 rectangle, right? And then you see what happens in the next step. Then you will see that this triangle will shrink. The left, the, the, the vertical and horizontal sides will stay the same, but the diagonal will be pushed in by one step. So, in a, uh, so actually, the, uh, any size island will be uh, erased in linear time. And uh, so the uh, so this is okay, right? So we have uh, by the way to achieve the same uh, some similar behavior in one dimension. It's already a little bit, uh, somewhat less trivial. It's possible. I mean, there are, there are many ways to doing that, and there are some very simple ways of doing that, but not trivial. And uh, so actually, I mean, uh, unless I get to it and show an example, you know, then uh, you may want to think about how you would define some simple server automaton rule that starting from all, uh, it could have more than two states, but still, from all uh, uh, starting from all the, uh, from all my finite many zeros, this stores all zeros. Starting from all my finite many ones, this stores all ones. It's not not completed. But uh, right now, uh, so we are interested in the question: What happens when? Uh, well, we have noise. So strictly speaking, I should. Define this like what is a probabilistic cellular automaton. There is there are very general definitions, but in the, but right now don't you uh, just imagine something simple, namely that at any point of time, any cell instead of performing the uh, transition rule does something different. I mean, with some there is a for, with some small probability, it uh, it. it uh, goes into another state, not where the transition function takes it. And so, so then, uh, and now there is a question, what is your error model, right? Are these faults independent of each other? Are they adversarial, or is that, do you permit some kind of a correlation among them? We take the simplest model, we assume they are in but you know, that doesn't still mean that uh, the problem becomes trivial. So now, I, just to, to be able to formulate theorems, I can make it a, introduce some terminology. So we look at a random history within 
which shell configuration looks like. And uh, then uh, we will uh, define, so now instead of, we will talk about, so we have another uh, probability distribution where this history is, right? That's a random history, right? And uh, so the set of measures, we'll, uh, we'll consider the set of those measures, which we call, uh, uh, where, where we say that the random history has epsilon bounded knots. And uh, the, the, uh, we have uh, a rather uh, minimal but still strong restriction on this. And it will be the following that, it will be the following that for any k points in space time, the probability that there is a fault at each of these k points is less than epsilon to the k. But, so this answer so is actually allows actually uh, uh, all kinds of other even some kind of dependencies as long as as long as this at least we know this. Right? This is all we need. But uh, for any k, at least it, the, the, it, the effort may conspire, but uh, not. That's all we need. So we call, we say that, the, the, that uh, this random history has absolute bounded noise and it has this. <coughs> so the probability there's the fault at every point. Is that, is that what it is? Yeah, the probability now for any k points, any k different points, that at each of them simultaneously. Simultaneously. Well, I mean, in space time, something like that. There is one, the probability of that is less than the maximum of the day. Right? So, and, uh, okay, so now, uh, so, the, so, so, the F, so this MG epsilon psi is the set of those random uh, uh, distributions which, given an initial configuration, Psi has this problem. And then, uh, now, we call, now we can call the rule G robustly self-restoring, but we have the following property. Let zeta x t be the value that would be there under the deterministic combination, right? And then we have that basically Simultaneously, at any point of space time, the probability, so if epsilon is small enough, let us say, then if epsilon is small enough, then at any point of space time, the probability that this value, that the value in this history is not equal to the deterministic value is smaller than, uh, is, is, is small. So, I mean, I could have written here something definite like two epsilon. So what I say, so the, so it, so similarly, no matter where you look, it should be small. So occasionally uh, there could be, of course, big deviations, but uh, uh, they, uh, so this implicitly really assumes a self property, right? Because the, the faults, they assume, they, are, they allow occasionally uh, a very large, uh, creating a very large island where, uh, where, fall, uh, where uh, the values are different from zeta. But then, uh, but uh, this should be quickly erased again, right? Because it appears there will be small probability, but it, so, but this really says that, uh, that it guarantees that uh, we have several automaton that somehow doesn't allow the ac accumulation of faults, right? Uh, the, but you know the, the strong statement is just this. Uh, the, the formal statement is just this. But this is what we want, right? So this is what we want. So we call the so robust self historic if this has this property. And so then, uh, so the the first uh, interesting theorem in this area was by Andre Tom, who proved that proved that this strong robust majority rule. Is has has this robust self restoring property, and uh, I, let me just show you. Actually, it's interesting to see. Well, hopefully, I, I, I it will show. 
So here is a uh, yeah, here things uh, I look, look a little different because here is a little example of of a I, I put in an island actually I, I could well let me start it from New York So so I put in an island a square and I already added a little noise. Actually I added with four percent probability actually let us say uh, the uh, you, you turn things into one and with two percent probability you turn them into zero. And uh, now we apply the transition and see what happens. So you see that I mean it, this is it, oh it should come back actually uh, again yeah it already disappeared. Let me just stop. Yeah, it, yeah, that this, I guess, yeah, you see. So you see, basically, what happens that this shrinking triangular property is really robust enough that that uh, it resists noise, right? Because it goes with a uh, uh, positive speed, right? The if the faults are small enough. They are okay. They, they, they can slow down the shrinking, but they are not going to. Uh, but they are not going to uh, As opposed to, let us say, look at for what happens with four line papers and with the same noise. As a matter of fact, this island is not only not shrinking, but it is growing uh, because uh, the. Because uh, if this rule, these symmetric rules are really not, are unable even to resist a biased noise. It's a, uh, by the way, it's still an open question what happens with the unbiased noise, but with the biased noise, they, they, are, they cannot. And okay, let's go back to this. Yeah. So, uh, so the, I, I might return to two topics later. But one of them I mentioned, but probably will not have time. Uh, but uh, no. So, one of the some of the uh, important property of the tone group is that it is monotonic. Right? What does it mean? It is monotonic. It means that you know, if, we, if I increase uh, the configuration at any one point, then the result can only increase. The a transition function can only increase. Right? So, and uh, and uh, but the, of course the majority rules are all monotonic, but there are many other monotonic rules. So now. Uh, we will in, so I, at this point we would like to just study this kind of island erasing property for monotonic groups because that's kind of interesting enough that this is that some there are some nice results available. So we call a monotonic several a monotonic several automaton uh, with the property that it keeps uh, zeros keeps in zeros. We'll call it an eroder if it arranges finite islands, of, a finite island of ones, right? Now, of course, the, if it is like, like the majority rule, then it, then it is nice. It also arranges finite islands of zeros. But now, you know, that's the characterization that I talk about is just one one side. It, what what is uh, required to erase finite islands of non zeros so, so what is so what tone group? Then this is already uh, uh, significantly uh, stronger result. It proved that uh, the eroder property implies also the robustness. So once uh, an eroder in two, uh, once there uh, once a two state eroder in any any dimensions, once a two state eroder is. Uh, two states uh, monotonic sub 
is an error that it does this also robustly. It actually uh, uh, erases uh, so so a small enough noise will not work. And uh, so this is actually a, so this is a non-trivial, highly non-trivial result. And actually it consists of two parts. First, there is a characterization of uh, all two state aromas. And the second is to show that then uh, that those you know, the, the characterization also helps proving the robustness. So and by so what is a characterization? Of course you can say, well, we will see an we want an algorithm that shows that can be decide about the rule, is it an error or not. But I will actually give you the characterization without the proof, but I will give you the characterization. And uh, is this is similar to this uh, about each neighbor. Uh, arbitrary neighbor. It's not not near a neighbor, no, arbitrary neighbor. Arbitrary fixed neighbor. So the definition we only require that we are self restoring from all zeros. Yes. Okay, so what's the but there is only two states, zeros and ones. Okay, so for example, a rounder, uh, just to understand the definition, the constant cellular automata is a rod, which always uh, oh, gives yeah. zero. Yeah, that's a rod. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all. Uh, it, we are, of course, say, for example, you will see how I mean, the rounder condition is a uh, very simple one. I will give it in two dimensions, but it will be the same. But for example, from the other condition, it will be seen that, okay, in more than one dimension, you could have an eroder that is eroder both when you were also when you do zeros for ones, right? Like this majority. But for example, in one dimension, there is no such eroder. So, you know, I mean, the eroder, you can erode the island of ones, or you can erode <coughs> it, but, but not. But uh, those rules will not, not carry inside of those things. So. Uh, okay, so, so it actually, but uh, basically, it turns out that uh, in some sense, all one all, all elders look like the tone group. Right? Uh, so you can say that they all are characterized by some shrinking time or something. Shrinking triangles, or in the degenerate case, shrinking stripes. And this is what is said here, right? So basically, you can define a kind of generalized triangular pyramid. Pyramid it means that it's a pyramid or, or just, a, uh, just a, a prison. And what the rule says is that, that, that uh, if uh, there is such a pyramid, that whenever the base is uh, whenever the base contains all the non-zeros, then the whole in the, then, then the then the whole pyramid contains all the non-zeros of the history, of the trajectory. Right? So this is the same as saying that we have a triangle that that is a shrinking triangle, right? In this case, in some sense, right? Shrink, no, shrinking and possible, but shrinking connect uh, combined with a translation. Shrinking plus sliding. So you know it may happen that uh, that you know, are a triangle, but the next one is smaller one, but like here, and the next one is smaller one. Like here. So that's uh, that, that is so. And uh, this this pyramid picture is sure. And uh, we have a gen the general we could have a general the general case where it is really just the two sides uh, of a slide. Uh, I don't understand what the pyramid means. Pyramid? So I think to the end. This is the space. Uh, we are talking about uh, space. space. Okay, yeah. So space the vertical direction is slide. Two of the dimensions. And, and you claim that every triangle becomes smaller or... Well, I claim that there is. So there is a particular a pyramid shape. A fixed, a certain pyramid shape. With the property that Whenever the uh, whenever all the non, non zeros are in the bottom, covered by the bottom, then in the trajectory all the non zeros are within the pyramid. Okay. 
right? So it's, it's just kind of generalization. So this is a so this is Tom's theorem, and then then kind of a now the the second part showing that that when you have such a rule, it is also ro robust. That's you know that that uh, the proof of that would probably require like a two-hour lecture by itself. So it's a Tom, the proof of Tom's theorem is not that simple. But so it's a theorem. And, uh, so, but uh, but also so that so that so all these eroders. It's interesting to remove uh, mention that all such eroders actually not just array silence but array silence. At linearly to diameter. But, uh, but, okay, so it's not immediately obvious that just from this characterization that there is a simple way to decide is how, why there is always such a, such a uh, pyramid. So there is actually an equivalent characterization. Would you actually find this pyramid in like a long time? And find the pyramid, right? So, but it is a, there is an equivalent uh, beautiful characterization by Tom, and if I will have time, I, will, uh, I can return to it at the end. But uh, uh, again, I doubt we will have time, we'll, get, we'll see at the end. Yeah, yeah so, so if you have an eroder, and I'm, I'm doubting, is it really an eroder? You can just give me the pyramid and I'll calculate in yeah. finite time. And so in one direction, yeah. The other direction showing from so you got something is not an eroder, right? Uh, we have to show that there is no such pyramid. So that's a uh, yeah, yeah. So I say that the characterization is just a, is a decision procedure, right? it's, uh, and it's it's uh, it's a simple one, but I, I want to skip it now because I, uh, that's an old result and want to get something. Oh, so yeah, it, it's here, but I'm skipping skip, uh, skip it if I want to get to. The, uh, the newer parts, and so, so it is also already Andre Tom who who asked them the question: How much more than two states? It's still monotony. Suppose it's still one monotony rules. We have an all that uh, the set of uh, states is linearly ordered, but let us see more than two. For example, three, zero, one, and two. Uh, but we still require monotonicity, and we ask the question: Okay, can we somehow say which rules are eroders and which ones are not? Oh, sorry, that was for only two states. Automata is that right? That's every good. the characterization was strictly for two states. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's important. Uh -huh. So it turned, so this one slide shows that 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 er, that as soon as we uh, go beyond two states, everything becomes more complicated. So let us say, first of all, are all eroders uh, linear time? And the answer is no. It turns out in one dimension it is still two, but in two dimensions it's not. Second, are all eroders robust? Not even in one dimension. And we will later. But wait. So you, it, you said in the previous slide that this is true. I no, mean, still. No, 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 but that, two, two, that was for two states. Ah, I see. So for three states already, I see. Uh, there is an, we'll see an example of mm -hmm. an eroder, still, not still by under uh, an example of an eroder, two, three state ero uh, uh, eroder in one dimension, that's not robust. Uh, it's linear time, but still not robust. Interestingly. And then, so, this, so as I say, all linear time eroders robust? No. Can robust eroders characterize, characterize? Yes, in one dimension. And uh, also, in one, in one dimension, also eroders can be characterized. And robust eroders also, but, are, but it's not the same characterization. But uh, are robust eroders linear? Yes, in one dimension, probably always somehow. Yeah, I think we, we didn't we didn't get to work on the more the several dimension versions, but we think the answer is yes. But so here there is a big there is a difference between robust between robust and then not robust. So what is interesting and can eroders be characterized? We 
don't throw it into the emergency room. In one dimension, yes. And uh, uh, already, it was already done by Barbier in 76. And uh, we, uh, we characterized it a little bit by a French student called Mathieu Hiller to partially order set of states, not order but partial order. But uh, does it mean that the set of states that you can only go from like uh, a higher to a lower state? Well, you know, the monotonicity makes sense also when the set is not ordered just partially. Right? So, but you see, why is partially ordered set interesting at all? Uh, I mean, of course, it's in, it may be interesting by itself, okay, but that's uh, the reason why I brought up this question is by our, our current our current inability to characterize our orders in two dimensions. Mm -hmm. So my, I thought, okay, okay, maybe I cannot uh, we cannot characterize our orders in two dimensions. The general case could be characterized that at least when uh, everything is cons confined uh, 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 to S five, right? But, and when it is all confined to a stride, then you basically you would, consider, you, would say that, you would say that it is really a one-dimensional eroder or a partial eroder, right? So, so at least now we can do that. But uh, it, it's a rather modest uh, advance. So, okay, so uh, now, so I wanted to say a little bit more about the, how is this quasi one dimensional characterization going because it shows, shows a little some subtleties. It's, it shows it's, it's kind of interesting to see why how you can have uh, linear time orders but that are still not robust. Right? So so uh, <coughs> so that. So in one, once you in a one-dimensional eroder, in, in a one-dimensional uh, uh, monotonic cellular automaton, I suppose the set of states is like one to n, then it's worth considering certain special configurations that we call ladders. So these are just a ladder is just what you see here, right? So it is some it is a configuration just that or, or is Whose values are between A and B, and this is just uh, it is just growing from A to B to R to right. Okay, and this is why is this interesting? Well, we will also just assume that uh, that, that the rule when it is a, 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 a when it is a constant neighborhood, it doesn't change, that. and that means that an A B ladder will always just stay an A B ladder, and uh, so. And the only thing is that the boundaries, the, which one well, boundary on x left, the other x right, but those boundaries are, are moving, right? And so then, uh, so there's a you can a special ladder which is just an a b jump uh, goes jump from a to b. We'll consider it an a b jump. We'll call it an a b jump. And then, now, it turns out that, so, uh, the, the key to, uh, the key to characterizing uh, one with the, these monotonic one-dimensional automata is this, uh, this fact which is, uh, Which is not so not as, as obvious as it seems, but that namely the 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 left side, the left end of the A B jump and the right end of the A B jump both kind of have a uh, they have a kind of speed and they are on the way they move and so one can enclose the history into this into two constant its times. And so, so and then clearly some of the velocities of these types are what is what is important. Those will be used as the in the characterization of what are the holders and what are not. So this this 
small, right? The, the, so there will be a left. So it has a each stripe has a left velocity and a right velocity, right? So the left velocity is the is the axle and the, uh, uh, the, the, width, the speed of the axle and the right And so then the okay. So the another criteria uh, is uh, the by Galtieri is just this that that you see look at a look at an arbitrary island then then what this says essentially what this says is that Sooner or later, the top should be the mean. Right? Because it says that the, that, that the right speed of the left boundary should be, far, should be kind of faster than the left speed of the right boundary. Oh, right? right? So, that is, I mean, they may move in the same direction, but they kind of. So, sooner or later, the, the, the top should be. This is right, the R zero should be bigger than L D zero. That's what it says. So right. and see this will this should be true for each uh, for each B, right? So for so every uh, every non-zero B. Right? So that, that, that so whatever the top is, it should disappear after a while. And then of course then the leg stop remains and that should be a here. So that so if you have this property, then then uh, question. I, I just uh, so could you please repeat what is uh, how is R zero? So firstly, R zero B and oh yeah, R zero. Yeah, let's go. To that is uh, defined for some uh, for so, some. Yeah. So here is a yeah. So here is a, again a, a, a so it's a uh, here is a ladder, right? And so we call this X L the left. To the left end point of the ladder. This is X R the right end point of the ladder, and they have different. They go with some speeds in time. So the actual the, there is a theorem saying uh, that that they uh, they move uh, with a certain speed and actually in space time they remain in a certain time. And that X L may move actually in this direction. So they, are, they have a, uh, both of these have, uh, and so we call this this speed we call R. When you see them, uh, uh, we call this R A B, right? So the speed, the slope of this uh, slope of this uh, uh, the stripe we call R A B, right? So when you see they move, what do you mean? So when you see it moves, what does that mean? Actually? Well, so if you look at the history, look at the history of the ladder. It will still be a ladder. It will still be a ladder. At the edges yeah. of the, of the, the end side, the, or the, the end, and the two ends of the ladder, they, they are, they, then you can construct a stripe, a you know, space time stripe that contains one end and the ladder and the other. Yeah. Uh, it's not obvious. It's one can show that, uh, showing that there is a limit speed is kind of a rather simple argument, but to show that they, they are actually confined to a stripe, it takes some, it's, do you, need to assume, do you need to assume that if, if it's monochromatic, the input, then the output will be that? Yeah. Well, monochromatic, we assume that monochromatic uh, is, uh, doesn't change. It doesn't change, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah that, I mean, how can I remove the assumption, but it's nothing more. No, 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 I think in this is clear, it's just, it's yeah. just a finite window. No, but, it's, yeah, but the, the, the fact that it is a finite window is not, a, uh, it's not obvious, but it's actually it is a... It, it, it's, uh, that's a good part of the Galperi data. So, to say. so what it, let me let me just say the following. It should be so that the, the, it's easy to show that these right speed, left speeds, whatever, that the speeds exist. And for that, it's easy to show that this condition that the top <coughs> should be top will be separated, that it's sufficient, right? If we have that condition, then the top will be swept away, and then the next top, and so on. But it's not obvious that it is. So that it is a necessary condition, but without this somehow the, the, uh, the, the rule is not an eroding. And for that one needs this more careful 
there are a lot of more, more precise notion of these tribes. So, anyway, so I, I think it, so basically it is, uh, uh, this is uh, the gathering condition, right? You can, and here is a particular example on which you can see what is happening. I, I, so, though I don't see, see I don't show you the, 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 the rule that is really, well, really, the, the rule, I, it's easy to show the rule, but let me just try to explain what is happening here. We start it from a set of tools. And suppose the rule is something like that, that, that the tools will turn into ones, starting from the right. But the ones will, are, will turn, can turn into zeros only starting from the right. Right? So this is a particular rule which show which is a rule. Yeah? Tools because first the tools will be swept away and then the ones will be swept away. But somehow only one after the other. It happens in linear time, but it turns out that such a that this rule is not robust. So kind of a is a, another picture that somehow shows us more. Uh, this is essentially the same rule, but uh, just I started with an initial, of other initial configuration. But this somehow already shows the problem. So suppose that here, in the meantime, some some error introduces a new uh, introduces new tools. Then those tools will also kind of, will kind of travel to the left and slow things down. Here. And more and more and. So it turns out that, so in a way, in order for these ones to sweep away the tools, somehow there is a, mess, a message has to get back across the island from the right to the left. And you know, since errors happen in every step with a small probability, somehow it really, the, probability, the, the chance for a mess, such a message to really get through it, without turning into ones, uh, to two, is exponentially small. And so one can, from this actually one can, uh, well, already Tom did this, so one can construct an argument showing that it actually doesn't happen. So if this, and I, you know, with an appropriate uh, uh, probability, uh, set, uh, uh, pro appropriate uh, setting of uh, faults, actually the, this island in noise but will grow rather than so, so Darberry's criterion is criterion. It is is good in uh, in the absence of noise, but there is a problem with noise. And so this is the point where then. Well, here is the example. Like, uh, here is the, uh, the the definition of that particular example. But I think I kind of explained already in words what it is. So, uh, uh, so, yeah, I don't think we have to go to the details. But so, so this is where we were, and then, and then well, uh, 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 Finnish uh, author Ilka Turner looked at this uh, problem and looked at Tom's example, and, uh, and thinking about it, he understood what is the criterion that we need for a non-dimensional order to be robust. And it is significantly stronger. And so, but it, it looks similar, but it is in this. So it means what, what it says that is, uh, is what is here. So, it, right? So it says that, that uh, now it looks similar. You know, let, let me remind you what the what the other criterion was. So the Gartnerian criterion was just just this, right? So you see, and now, so this criterion says on the other hand, right here, uh, not 
Testament. It is uh, So uh, it's, it's stronger. It says that if you have some something going up to P, then here there must be somewhere an A. So that if the A appears, it kind of sweeps back, sweeps away the B. So the point is that you don't have to, you don't need the effect of the zeros to to sweep away the top. If, if there must be something that appears and then it uh, then that will that uh, will cause uh, the beast uh, on the top to be a seed. You don't have so you don't have, yeah. Uh, yeah. So A and B are uh, are, are states of, uh, of they are all states. Yeah. So I just don't understand. So here in theory B for all B so. And so for all B, which are at most the number of states, or...? For all, no, for all, well, which, which yes. one are you asking? The second the uh, one? For example, what? The, yeah. the for every, every state B, right? Ah. There is a smaller, uh, there is a smaller state A that kind of sweeps away the, the B top, right? And actually, right, and actually it sweeps away the stronger way that, that, that the A's that, that, that the A's will take over, right? So not, not just the TB top will be swept away, but everything above A, right? So, and then, you know, so, but, you know, this, why is this done? Because then for, for this A, there is, there must be another A prime with the same property. So somehow, uh, right? So first step, so then, so really what it really says that there is a, Actually, a one greater than a two greater than whatever a uh, k equals zero. That so you know if you say a one is the top, and so okay then if you start a one was the top, okay then there is some a two was the same sweep away all the a a ones and then the a uh, and everything above it up to a one and then there is an a three that sweeps away everything uh, above it up to a two and so on. Peter, this is, it seems that uh, L should be larger than L. No, uh, it's this. That's, yeah, so it's, it's different from this. You but see, here you need that. But here, the criterion should, should, should be stronger. It so it implies. Yeah. No, the algorithm, yeah, no, the algorithm criterion is weaker, right? So here you require the R, and actually yes. it, it, and it, it only sweeps away the top. Here, right? Here you require uh, it works only in the zero helps to sweep away just the top. Here, some whatever it is in between will possibly the zero, but not necessarily a zero. But then, then it sweeps away everything, not just not just the everything up to uh, down to itself. So this a uh, is not equal to zero. Not necessarily. It could be zero, but it doesn't have to be. But, oh, on, the, but on the other hand, it does something stronger, right? So the zero doesn't immediately sit uh, down to zero, but this A sweeps it, so it sees the, uh, sees everything down to A. And this criterion says that uh, a rotor uh, should satisfy this system. Yes. So if you Characterize robust rotors, they also should satisfy this. They do. I mean, this. Uh, but from, from this. But from this. Uh, and then L0B. You know, this will. No, I mean, this does satisfy the Garberry property, but it's, it is stronger. It, it, it is stronger. So, what's strange is that the R and the L's are in different. Uh, yeah. On the R, but on the other hand, here. And also that uh, it doesn't have to be zero here. But, uh, well, that's not important. Actually, if I, yeah, if, of course, if it had to be, if I wrote here zero, that would be even stronger, but that we, uh, that's not necessary. What is important is that the R's and the L's are in the upper, uh, different, right? So in different directions. And what this means is that, that not just the top will be swept down, but everything down to A will be swept down, right? In one. Linear C. So you don't. So and this is why, right? So somehow you don't have to wait. So it, it 
so this is about me that that you don't have this problem of having to wait until uh, on, until the top disappears before the second level can be because you know what this will mean is that you start somewhere here okay so this is B this is A whatever this is let us say D right as soon as B kind of you know A sweeps away something like B I mean not that the D can start on it and and it's the next level and does it mean so that the whole you, uh, the whole thing actually will be starting does it mean that if you restrict the letters to be A and B then the automaton works as a eroder well, uh, if you have just two letters, then if you have just two letters, then it, it uh, then both just result in the tone rules, tone criteria. Right, but does it does this mean that basically, with respect to B, in the world where there are only A and Bs, somehow yeah. the restriction it, of the, of the in rule the, as I say, in the world where there are only A's and Bs, then I think both though both criteria should be the same and it should be just the same as the tone or essentially the same but the, 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 the speed, two speeds should go out that the left uh, that, that's the diamond should shake I and mean, that's all it says right? it's not there if it two states it becomes no, I understand but what I'm asking is whether oh, but, but then what you're saying is that this, this rule is equivalent to saying that uh, if you just restrict the atom, take any B, yeah. there exists an A such that if you restrict the automaton to only A and B, then it's an eroder for that. No, it's not, not yeah, the no, same if thing. you restrict the automaton, <coughs> no, no, if you restrict the automaton without blanks, no, without blanks. No, to anything between A and B. Ah. Then uh, anything between A and B, then the A is C from the yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, but in turn, that you just apply recursively, oh. and then in turn, that should mean that. No, well, it's not. I mean, I said because between A and B there are all kinds of things, so it's not. You, you cannot just say that it becomes like a two-state. No, but now it's an eroder between everything between A and B. So, yeah. but then the criterion, and it's robust. So the criterion would say that for any for any C that you have in the middle, right? No, but it's. I think even in this case, it says more. See, even if we restrict it between A and B, it's not because it doesn't just sweep down the B, it sweeps it down to A, yeah, so the E right away. So, okay, it is, in, well, and because I, because of some basement, but you see, it, it's not, the, this one right here, it just sweeps down the top, here it sweeps down to A. So, and this is the criteria, then. so, yeah. For example, in the, in the example we have in Cos2, you have F0 to greater than R2. Yeah, this is, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just spelled it all, what this means for just these things, and, and essentially this is the same. And this is the contrary to the other one. See? This is... So, I mean, you know, I, this is, uh, again, that, that, so this, I just spelled it out, what it was, what the, what how, it is. Is it clear that this, how do you prove that it... Well, the proof is, that the proof is a different question, right? Okay. Proofs are not that simple, so, again, as clearly the sufficiency is not a big deal, but, but, uh, but uh, the necessity is uh, uh, complicated, by because now you have to show, basically, because that requires probabilistic reasoning, right? So you don't need, you don't need this necessary only in the probabilistic case, right? In the, in the, uh, in, in the deterministic case, God bearing is enough. But to show that this is also necessary in the probabilistic case, that requires uh, uh, more, com more complex reason. And that, uh, but, so this is it, so. Okay. Uh, about this example. Yeah. If L02 is greater than R20, yeah. then the formula is true. Yeah. Uh, then, well, oh, then we are already done. Uh, I mean, but, uh, but, but then, yeah, this is a. But your criterion uh, requires that for one, also so, we should. Uh, some no, see, it's L0 to, you see, the, we have just three states, right? So if L0 to is bigger than R to 0, it really means that the whole thing will be That already means that the whole island will be swept away, right? Because the left, the left, the left edge of the left, of the left ladder is, is sweeping away the right edge of the right ladder. 
Right? My question is quite formal. You have the criterion in the form. For all B, yeah. uh, exist A. Yeah. Less than yeah. B. So the first, uh, the first case is where A is zero. And the second case is where for, then for B plus 2. Well, for, I mean, the first story says that, that well, see, if R, R, L2, I didn't have to require this for B plus 1, because by monotonicity, this R2 follow from B plus 2. So, you see, somehow, in a, that, that's why I didn't have to require this. So, but, uh, and, but in this case, right, it could happen that for B, if B, for B plus 2, A here, A, it would be that A plus 1, and then I have to require from A plus 1, uh, B plus 1, A plus 0. See? So here we had, here we had two, uh, this is a case where we have mm -hmm. two steps, like 2 to 1, 1 to 0. This is a case where from 2, immediately jump to 0. The, the I just have to require the other, yeah, no, this one. So, um, when I say, so again, now our conjecture is that, uh, well, here is essentially the, the, some, some more explanation of why, uh, why this may be necessary also, but that, you know, the probabilistic uh, argument is a little, uh, uh, that, that is uh, more detailed, but it's, I mean, it's all elementary probability, there is no, Theory, but you know, it, it, it takes uh, it, 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 the details actually take a few days. But uh, uh, we really think that this uh, this style of characterization for the eroders will also work for more than one dimension, and that we didn't actually work it out. So let actually, but for but so let's go to two dimensions to show that things are more complex. And so well, I don't instead of showing uh, 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 giving you so here I actually describe an example of an eroda that erodes not in linear time. But I I don't really want you to read all these definitions. Instead, I show a picture. So so we'll look at the following kind of. Two-dimensional rule. It has just three states: zero, one, or two. Look at a big triangle. For the moment, ignore the right-hand side. Triangle. And imagine that the way it will be erased is not triangle, so it's square, right? That first the top turns into well, the top of the twos turns into ones from the left from left to right. And then the top of the then these ones turn into zeros from right to left. And of course this can I mean this you know, one can define easily such a rule and it will uh, and it, it will erase a square of size n, n by n square only n square of n, so it is already not linear. But situation is actually worse. Because uh, I, I could, while I do this, I could actually, with half speed, well, you can see that this is going on with, with the. Speed. So you want it to be linear in what? You want it to be linear in, in the speed in the line. In the line. So, what, what I actually can do in the same time, I uh, this top is being erased. I could somehow easily modify the rule so that it, with half the speed, it actually increases, here, for example, the right hand size, right? Like add, adds a whole whole set of ones, for example, here. Now you see, one step it adds a ones, and in the next step it turns those ones into twos, and then it continues like that. So this kind of half speed. Here. Therefore, with the uh, the actually this. The rectangle is becoming wider and wider. So, so by the, what this means is that by the time the top is raised, it already grew twice as long, twice as wide. So it will, the whole thing will be erased, but in exponential. And actually, this is where I stand. I did it because no, I mean, this is still Tom's example, but I don't know whether there is an example 
who knows, maybe one, somebody you know, more clever and can show that it, 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 is, it could be an example with super exponential time. Maybe not, but uh, maybe Oron can actually, uh, and here we stand, I don't even know whether the, the problem of, of the error that property is decidable in two dimensions. So whether uh, one can uh, 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 do so, for example, um, uh, this is not quite the same thing, maybe, but whether there is any kind of computable bound on how, how long it would take for an iron to prove. I mean, it's all. I don't. I don't know how difficult this problem is, but probably not so easy. You know, Andre Thomas. Uh, very, there was a. a, a Can't you simulate? Can you stuff. simulate the Turing Sorry? machine? Can Sorry? you simulate the Turing machine with this thing? You know, monotonicity is monotonicity is a very tough property. Well, how to say? I think well, you could simulate. Uh, actually, no. Say simulating a Turing machine in monotony cellular automata, I think it is possible because you can make things so that essentially monotonicity has no power. But to monotonicity together with the aerobic property is a very strong restriction. No, so but see, it's not it's no, but maybe you, you know, can simulate, but it's not. No, wait, but you use, you have three colors, or say you need five colors to simulate yeah. the Turing machine, well, put six colors in it. Right? Use the five colors monoton to monotonically simulate the Turing machine. If it's yeah, accepted, say, yeah, you put the sixth color and that just eats everything up. If it uh, doesn't accept, you don't put the sixth color so it will grow uh, infinitely. Or something like that. Maybe. Maybe, I think. But maybe you're right. Okay. Machine, maybe you're right. 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 I haven't seen, I thought a little about this, but I, I, I but... Uh, well, monotonicity. To me, well, yeah. as I, so to me, somehow, we are all property together with monotonicity. Well, it seems maybe, maybe difficult for to do this simulation. So what does monotonicity mean, is it again, exactly? It's, well, it seems that the, the other transition thing. rule, the transition rule is a monotonic function of the neighbor. So if all the neighborhoods have color one? No, no not just all, all the neighborhoods. I mean, just sorry. take up the neighborhood as a function, right? <coughs> if, if the neighborhood, I mean, the neighborhood uh, value is a function of, right? If, if you take a bigger function, the, 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 the value of the transition, the neighborhood of the transition function should be bigger, right? So it is simply... Oh, so, uh, it's like, wait. It's just a value. So you're saying if, if, if the minimum value of my inputs is two, the output must be at least three. Is, is this it? No. Ah. No, not as it is. No, I mean, let, let's say, if I say that, suppose that if John is Suppose I mean, we have something like this. Suppose ah, that the value of the function is the function is the no, of yes, x1. Yes, yes. No, I understand. Yeah. Uh, xk. I see. No, it's just that if xi is great, if xi prime is greater than xi, for all i, for all yeah, i, yeah, yeah, for even all just for I one, I see. then g of x1, no, x but then prime, yeah, but uh, xn is bigger mm -hmm. than g of x1. No, okay, so g. So that's it. So if you increase any one, any one of the values, then then the output has to be bigger. No, but no, but then maybe I can just simulate anything if I encode everything with things of Hemingway ten by two or something. No, as I say, the encoding as it is encoding trick it in work it works, but not but then the error, but combined with the other property somehow it's not successful. No, but again, uh, the other property could be because at the end the Turing machine if it accepts, it puts a special symbol which eats everything. But it has to be the it has to be the smallest one, so somehow. Uh, Maybe, so you see, okay. I don't know. But so so you have to take care about all the uh, invalid computations that, because you're looking at the false state of configurations, and you may have some badly initialized configuration which, which just never has. Never never like okay, so anyway, so I, I, as I say, this, no, I, I think it's a challenge. So uh, I'm happy if you want to think about this, it's, <laughs> I think it's a nice problem. Uh, I just wanted to say, that, we, so we worked a little bit, as I, I think I said it, rather really with, with an assistant, we worked a little bit on this problem, but 
but essentially uh, just restricted attention to this Hubble embodiment in the just uh, have a partial instead of an order. So essentially we could reproduce this Galperian type characterization. Uh, and it, uh, again the key was to show that even in this uh, 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 the key was to show that even in this partially of that case one Darba did have these, uh, these limited stripes in which uh, the left and right side of the letters is enclosed because that's what one needs for the necessary condition. And it was not again it was not quite trivial to prove the existence of the stripes. But uh, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't think it helped us in getting closer to the solution of the three-dimensional problem. And uh, okay, no, so this was uh, this was my talk, and I don't, I, I didn't watch the time, so. Ah, oh, but it's uh, sorry? It's perfect timing. Okay, so this was the uh, I mean, uh, yeah. This is So, in, uh, for, for the partial order, uh, the spread of slide, in yeah. uh, uh, the partial order criteria, A, B, jump, uh, what uh, are possible states between A and B? Uh, well, it has to be, uh, well, it has to be an increasing C. Increasing C, yes. Chain. Yes. Okay. Oh, just one question. Erased, so the color you're erasing is the highest one? Uh, the, the, the blank is the highest kind? No, know? I'll actually have to erase everything. I mean everything but zero, right? So zero is the smallest one. Zero is the smallest one. You see this our guy is a right? Uh -huh. yeah, but it's at least the highest one, but once the highest one it erases uh, it erases it erases the next highest. So this is true for every it has to be true for every Okay, so that was some, it looks like a 
uh, until this was an island. So at this point, then uh, this land is still not extend, the, then the zeros will spread with double speed and catch up and uh, then the whole thing will be yes. So this was kind of the general idea. But then the particular implementation and to show that it really works from arbitrary information, it took some time. Uh, uh, I came up with a definition, Kurdimov uh, came up with that then. Uh, here later, somehow, uh, we spent the night with and Leon did Lenin kept simplifying, simplifying and, until he came up with such an uh, extremely simple rule that, that, that uh, uh, Lenin became very well known. This is the so called GK and Rudy, because then he wrote up. And that rule is the following. It's best to explain it not in terms of zero and one, but in terms of left and right answers. So suppose that. There are two states, but it's not really a state. There are two states, and uh, so suppose that we have an island of left and roots in a state of right. Anyway, the, the, the rule is just the following. Look at your arrow, and look at the direction of your arrow, and take the first and the third neighbor, whatever they are, and just do a majority. So that's good. Cool. The first and the third? First and the third. Yeah. That's good. Cool. Mm -hmm. oh, it's not monotonic because, you know, the, so it's not just a whole because it depends on the direction. The direction depends on that. Mm -hmm. But that's the rule. Uh, so what, what is happening, so sir, you can, uh, what it really does, is uh, it will spread a kind of uh, area of alternating arrows, alternating moving space and time, and it will be caught up in triple speed. But then that's it, that's the rule. But so all these rules, or oh, very, very similar ones, all these rules, okay, they are arrow, they are raising, but they are not robust. And so it is the same problem as with the other governing rules that somehow, you know, see here a, a message would have to get across the island and it will die a thousand deaths before 